Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today, I got the challenge from my designer to replicate this uh, design up here. And as you can see, it has a very nice rounded box. It has some opacity inside. We have the input fields with the outline border. We have a logo, we have some text. I don't know if I manage everything into one uh, episode, but let's see. And if you follow me along, you will get this as a result, nearly pixel perfect. So let's get started. So first of all, I want to start by creating the asset. So we want to have a background image and it seems that it is lightly darkened. So we want to start with that. So first of all, I need to have that image ordered and then we have to create an asset folder. So we make right click on the main part, we say assets. If you ask for the folder structure that I always use, I use the large project folder structure that a creator recommended to me. I will put an info description inside the video. So for that, we have created an assets folder. And in this assets folder, we want to have an image, right? So images, this will be our background image. And I just took an image from Pexels in that case. Now we have the image in our assets folder, but the name is very long and unhandy, so I call it BG main so that will be our main background now if we have specified a folder where our assets are inside we have to go to the pubspec.yaml and if you read through the documentation you will also see that we have that part here how we can add an asset so i will take that for now add that here voila and now we have an error because that folder path does not exist for us it is assets images slash and with all that it imports everything that is underneath that images folder and we say packages.get and we get now this nice little image uh, which is kind too big i quickly make that smaller for us <laughs> So as you can see, I created a JPEG out of it. And the benefit is that we come underneath of 200 kilobyte. I did it with Photoshop, but you can use any graphic tools that uh, does exactly that for you. All right, so now we have our background image. And now we have also added it inside of our assets in pubspec.yaml, we set packages.get, and with that, the image is available to us. Now we have to clean up the main.dart because I don't like that everything in one file thing. So I remove all of that of the my home page. And inside of home, I say um, home screen, my favorite one. And as you all know, we already create the folder packages and we call it uh, screens. And in screens, we create a file called home screen.dart. We create a stateless widget for now that we call home screen and we import the material file. That is the basic scaffold that we are, uh, the basic boilerplate that we usually use for that stuff. Of course, we have to import in our main also that file. And with that, we are should be ready to go. I remove a bit more of documentation and now we are fine. Now let's start the whole application and take a look how it looks for us. Now we are set up and ready to go. And we want to wrap our container that we have in a scaffold because else it is too empty and we say that is the body. So, and now we have a white screen, that is perfect. And inside of that container, we want to have now a background image, right? So we use that container and inside of container, it has always a decoration option. Now we have to give him a back box decoration and the box decoration says that we have a square somewhere and we want to decorate that. We can have a shadow inside, we can have a border, we can have background images. All of that stuff is set inside of the box decorations. As you can also see here in the documentation, box shadows, gradients, shapes, all of that kind of stuff. So it is quite powerful. And with that, we can nearly transform our box into everything that we want. In our case, we want to have a background image. And as you see, we have already that image parameter that we can give. And it needs a decoration image, which I provide. And it complains that it needs an image because that is required. And now we can say where we get the image from. We have to provide an image provider. For now, we use the asset image provider. And now we have to specify the string towards the asset. And in our case, that is assets slash images slash bg main.jpg. That is exactly the path 
that goes here inside. So you can see assets, images, BG main is already pretty good, but it's not there where we want to have it, right? So we have to add here something into the uh, decoration image and we want to say fit, box fit dot cover. With that, you can already see that the image on the right side has now taken up the most of the space of the screen. There are also different valids like fill where we have where the image getting shrinked inside of the uh, possible space. Contain, as you have already seen, which is also the basic fit, the default fit that is inside. Then we have fit height, fade width, scale down is also very interesting sometimes. So it scales the image smaller, which is also helpful. None. And for us, we use cover. We want to cover the whole screen. But as you can see, it's also too bright. If I compare it to our image that we have in our preview, it is way brighter, right? So something is not right in that case. So how can we darken it? Hmm. Yeah, well, here inside, there is also the thing called color filter. A color filter is a filter that uh, creates a layer on top of the image that we have. So for us, we will create a color filter and we have the option to give it a blend mode. So yeah, mode with the color that we want to specify. In our case, we use black with a 12. So it should not be completely opaque. It is just 12% uh, opaque. And it is the blend mode darken because we want to darken the whole screen, All right? So we give it a... So. And as you see, the image immediately got a bit darker. Can... And you see, it's bright. And if I put it on again and save, you see it's getting a little bit darker. Okay, so that is already pretty neat. So we have closely to our box decoration. All of that is a const. I will write const in front of it. And I also will take it out of the decoration and create up here a const for that. So that is the box decoration background image. And it is a box decoration. And we are finished here. Of course, here we have to specify box decoration image. So if you ask yourself why I put that out on top of here and why I don't leave it inside, well, a constant is always very easy to read and if uh, nothing has uh, can change in a, during runtime inside of it. And that has the benefit that we can improve our speed up time and also the rebuild time of that screen. So it, I highly recommend whenever you can, you should take it outside or at least create a constant out of it. You don't have to create an own variable for it, but just create it as a constant if you can. And I knew that this is a constant because if you jump inside of box decoration, there is the const keyword in front of it. So you can also use the const keyword here in front of it. And I think you don't even need that here, but still I keep it for now. Whenever you can use a const keyword. So now we have created our home screen. We have created our nice little background image, but we want to go further, right? We want to have this in the end. So that means what I see here is we have, it seems like a column, right? Because we have one, two, three, four elements inside. All of them are in a certain space together from each other. So I should add here a child that we call column. And inside of that column, we have children. Another thing that you will see if I save now, everything is gone. And that is because the container takes always the space of its children. So if the container has a child, which is super small, in that case, nearly zero, then it collapses completely. It takes the space of the child. So if I say now to the column, please stretch yourself in the cross axis alignment, because in that area, we want to have it stretched, then you will see nothing because still there is no element inside. So for example, I create a container inside and now because that container is getting stretched, we see back again our picture. We, if we can have inside of that Flutter inspector, we can also use this nice little show depock paint and depock paint shows us the lines where the containers are living in. But for example, if I remove that, you can see there is nothing left from that uh, part. So it is completely collapsed to the side. We want still to create this, this, and this, and this here. And it seems that this is an image, I hope. So I will have another asset for that. This is just a text with Google Fonts, right? It is uh, Pacifico. And then we have this nice little box with three form elements. And then the end, we have a button. Okay, so let's start with this part here, right? Okay, so for our column, we have to say something. We want to have that we have space 
evenly. So every element should have the same space inside. Okay, and the first thing is again, hmm, what is it? It is round, it could be a circular avatar, but if I look right into it, and I can screw, zoom a bit in, you can see it has a box shadow. And a circle avatar does not provide us a box shadow or elevation. Hmm. What we could try is we could try to have a circle avatar and provide in a background image. Well, here we are with our image, <coughs> our um, logo image, and we want to use that in our home screen, right? We use that circular avatar, and I think I didn't make the packages get yet. So let's get the images, and because of our um, assets addition here in that case, we already import the uh, image correctly. So back to our circle avatar. I thought maybe what we can do is I use here, I don't know, background image is an image provider, and an image provider is in that case an assets image. Inside the assets image, we provide now the next asset string, which is assets images and demo logo for now, JPEG. And if I save, hmm, that looks kind of weird. But that's fine because our circle avatar needs to know first the radius and I give the radius of 30 pixels. Yep. So, and it's getting bigger, but the problem is that it's stretched, right? We didn't say specify that the circle avatar, uh, avatar should not be stretched automatically. But what, what we can use is the center widget to push the thing inside of the center. And as you can see, it immediately takes over and pushes into the center of the, the stretched widget. Because as you can see by the um, page debug, you can see that it's pushed through the center widget inside of the center. And I think 30 is a bit too small. Let's make it 80 and we have a bigger one. Now we have a circle avatar, but as I said, we have the problem with the elevation. There is no elevation or anything that can take a, a background, um, not uh, a shadow. What I can try is I surround the whole thing with a material widget. Hmm. But the material widgets gets a box. And I know that the material one uh, allows me to have a border radius. And I could also have an elevation that I say 2.0. And now the thing gets an elevation. But it seems kind of odd that I have to surround something by a box and then take it off again. So instead of creating that circular avatar, we can take a look inside and we see that we have a lot of different types, but we have also a build function. So how is the circular avatar actually built? It is an animated container that have some box decorations. And if this is an animated container, does it mean it is at the end a container? Hmm. Let's see a bit deeper in the application. And yes, inside of the build function, we have a container in that case. Interesting, okay. So for us, this means that this circular avatar in the end is nothing else than a container. And that helps us a lot because now I can remove that and we say we use a container again. We have now a decoration with a box decoration. And inside of that box decoration, for example, we want to have a border radius because I think there is something better. We have the shape property. And the shape property allows us to give it a box shape circle. And now it's gone, of course, because nothing is inside. So the uh, container is empty, right? So let's define that container a width of 100 and a height of 100, just to see something. So we see still nothing because we still have an empty container. But as you can see, the debug view allows us to see the invisible container more or less. And we can use that now because we want to have an image inside. And as we did before, we use again the image. We say it's an asset image. We deliver the source, um, the string to the uh, file. Images demo logo dot JPEG. And as you see, everything is red because it is, ah, yeah, sure. We have to provide a decoration image in the box decoration. And here we have an image and with that, the asset. And here we go, we have our picture. So, but if I turn off that view here now, we see there is no shadow whatsoever. So how we can add the shadow? Now it's coming a very interesting part because what we need to do inside of the box decoration, we have to define the box shadow. 
And this contains a list. If you took a look here, go back to that. We, we see here it contains a list of box shadows. Okay, so that means we can have multiple box shadows here inside. So we create one for now, shadow. Up. So, and what does a box shadow take? It takes a color, the blur radius, a spread radius, and an offset. And all of that comes very close to that what we have out of CSS, right? So we can use that. So color could be colors.black. We can have a blur radius from, uh, let's say, six. And the offset needs to be an offset. Our offset means how we move the shadow behind. So we have one layer, and then we have another layer, and now we move the layer a bit down and a bit on the right so that we create this visualization of moving something. So let's say two and six, for example. And we see we have a box shadow down here, you see? And we can also take that a bit less because we add an opacity here, and I take an opacity of 0 0.5. As you see now, or 0 0.6, just make it a bit better. Cool. And now you can see very easily we could recreate our circle avatar, which provides us usually all the infos that we need, and create that logo that you can see up there. All right. That is already something, I think. So the next thing that we want to do is we create a text with the budget tracker. And if we save now, you see immediately there is some space. And if you have good eyes, we see down here that the text appeared. So if I add now a color, a style, of course, text style, and we add a color here, for example, white, or what means, for example, white, and we want to center that one, right? All right, so and now we centered it. And now they have exactly the same space. So whenever we add now two containers to it, so a container and another container, we should see that we get nearly the same space to all of that. And if I add now again the debug mode, we can see this has its space, then this one has its space, and there would be the next one, and there the next one. And they will take exactly the same amount of space. That is because we added this space evenly into the main axis alignment. Okay, so now we have the text, and of course we want to have the Google fonts. So we go to the pubspec.yaml, we import, as we did in the last video session, Google fonts, right? Google fonts, and I say right now any, because I don't know the exact um, uh, the exact version. I just take any version, at least that we have some. And if I go back to the home screen, instead of the text style here, I will say Google Fonts, what is it, Pacifico, I think, with the text style, uh, with the color, colors.white, and maybe the size 36. And now we have already the half of our page. Great! This is the first half of our nice little budget tracker register screen. I hope you liked that uh, first episode and there will be the next one coming next week. Thank you so much for joining me today. On the right side, you see the subscription button. If you like that show, please leave a like or even a comment below if you have any questions. Else there is to say up there, there are two videos that you are maybe interested in. And thank you so much for watching me until next week. See ya.